How's it going everybody? Wayne here. So I bought a mega lot of 27 boxes, games, and manuals. Let's check them out. Alright, the first game we have up is a puzzle game. It's Tetrisphere. Tetrisphere was developed by H2O Entertainment and published by Nintendo. It released for the N64 in 1997. In Tetrisphere, you can choose from many different ways to play the game, including rescue, hide and seek, and puzzle. In rescue and hide and seek, you start with a giant sphere with different shapes. The idea is to drag blocks that are alike and make the sphere disappear, uncovering different pictures. In puzzle mode, you'll find ways to make the entire puzzle disappear. If you mess up once, the puzzle starts over. Even though I had all the Tetris games on N64 before, I never played any of them. What a shame because this game is fun and it's definitely worth adding to the collection if you're a puzzle game fan. And Tetrisphere is game number 92 for the N64 library. Next up we have another cruising game, Cruisin' Exotica. Cruisin' Exotica was developed and published by Midway Games. Exotica was the third game in the series on the N64, releasing in 2000. Here is a good example when a good series takes a nosedive. The first two games in the series were great, but Midway seemed to have dropped the ball on this one. The game feels rushed. The controls are more loose and it doesn't have the same feel as the first two games. The physics are awful. You'll blow right through some trees that Cruisin' World would have never let you get away with. The gameplay also feels very shaky and not smooth at all. I will say some of the tracks are pretty neat and colorful. And finally you have the startup music. No comment. If you want a good cruising game for the N64, stick with Cruisin' World. Cruisin' Exotica is game number 93 for the complete in box N64 library. Next up we have Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. Miss Pac-Man was developed by Mass Media and published by Namco, releasing for the N64 in 2000. Although the game released in all regions on the Sony PlayStation, Miss Pac-Man released for the N64 exclusively in North America. Miss Pac-Man is a 3D version of a typical Pac-Man game. Instead of just collecting pellets, you'll go through each level solving puzzles and collecting keys to advance. The game is also a lot more forgiving than the original Pac-Man game, allowing you to take hits instead of dying after being touched once. The graphics in the game are good, but the controls still feel like the good old Atari at points when you're trying to turn but keep going straight. Overall, it's a pretty fun game if you like Pac-Man. And Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness is game number 94 for the N64 library. Next up, a golf game, Mario Golf. Mario Golf was developed by Camelot Soft and published by Nintendo. It released for the N64 in 1999. There are a ton of ways to play in Mario Golf 64. There's tournament, get character allowing you to unlock new characters by beating the computer, ring shot, speed golf, stroke, and mini golf. Variety in gameplay isn't the only thing this game did right. There are multiple courses as well. The controls are good and the challenge is fun. It's an all around fun golf game for the N64. My only complaint is not being able to select all the characters at the start. You have to unlock them. But this is one of those games you'll get into so much that you'll lose track of time. If you want a fun golf game for the N64, you can't go wrong with Mario Golf. And Mario Golf is game number 95 for the N64 library. Next up, another Mario sports game. It's Mario Tennis. Mario Tennis was also developed by Camelot Soft and published by Nintendo. It released for the N64 in 2000. Like Mario Golf, there are a ton of ways to play the game. And all the characters are there from the get-go. You can choose from Exhibition, Tournament, Ring Shot, Bowser Stage, and Piranha Challenge. The graphics and controls in this game are excellent. All of the ways to play the game are a blast from a normal tennis game to go into the Bowser Stage and playing a game of Mario Kart Tennis, throwing bananas and shells at the other opponent. The Piranha stage allows you to see how many balls you can get past the other side that are fired at you. Mario Tennis is fun and inexpensive. It's definitely a title worth having in the collection. And Mario Tennis is game number 96 for the N64 library. Next up, our third Turok game, Turok Rage Wars. Turok Rage Wars was developed and published by Acclaim. 
and it hit store shelves in October of 1999. Turok Rage Wars is the third game in the series on the N64. It's a first person shooter like the other Turok games, but the gameplay is a little bit different than the other Turok games. In single player, you're advancing by completing tasks in each level. Tasks consist of defeating a certain number of enemies with a set amount of lives. This Turok game was more focused on multiplayer. However, as most know, the game had a glitch that made it impossible to beat it in two-player mode. The claim allowed customers to mail in their copy of the game with a glitch, and they sent them back a game that fixed the issue. The original game cart was black, and the one they sent back was gray. The black version will run you about $5 loose. The gray copy is going to cost you upwards of $250 in today's market because it's a variant. And Turok Rage Wars is game number 97 for the N64 library. Next up our fourth Turok game, Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion. Turok 3 was developed and published by Acclaim and it released for the N64 in 2000. Turok 3 is the fourth and final Turok game on the N64. Like the other Turok games, Turok 3 is a first person shooter. Turok 3 takes place where Turok 2 left off. Many of the downfalls in previous games were fixed in Turok 3. The gameplay runs smooth, and the biggest improvement is being able to save the game at any point. That was a major downfall in Turok 2. After testing all the Turok games, the original and Turok 3 are the two I'm most excited to go back and try more. And Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion is game number 98 for the Complete in Box N64 library. Next up we have a pretty unique game for the N64 and that game is Hybrid Heaven. Hybrid Heaven was developed and published by Konami. It released for the N64 in 1999. Hybrid Heaven is a pretty interesting game. It's an action adventure game where you need to solve puzzles and hit switches to make it further in the game. That is until you get in a fight and then the game totally turns into an RPG style of fighting. After winning a fight, you can upgrade parts of your body to become stronger. Although the game offers some unique gameplay, it's often criticized for it having the same surroundings throughout the game. You go through door after door after door with the same scenery. For the amount of time I played the game, it seemed pretty fun. This is one of those games that you would have to play through for a while before giving a fair opinion. And Hybrid Heaven is game number 99 for the N64 library. Next up we have a strategy game, Command & Conquer. Command & Conquer was developed by Westwood Studios and published by Virgin Interactive. It released for the N64 in 1999. Command & Conquer is a real-time strategy game. The idea of the game is to gain resources and make troops to overrun the enemy. Command & Conquer uses a point-and-click control where you can select your troops and give them commands. I played this game a lot growing up and it's a lot of fun. This is another game that's inexpensive but worth playing if you're into RTS games. Command & Conquer is game number 100 for the collection. Here we got a fighting game, Mace the Dark Age. Mace was developed by Atari Games and published by Midway, releasing for the N64 in 1997. Mace is a fighting game for the N64. I'll start off by saying this game looks pretty amazing graphically. The characters are clear and the backgrounds look great, especially for such an early release. However, if you're a hardcore fighting game fan, you probably won't enjoy this game so much. This game, like Xena Warrior Princess, is a button masher. I didn't touch the manual before playing this game, and I was able to wipe enemies out just by mashing the buttons. If you're a hardcore fighting game fan, stick to a Mortal Kombat game that requires you to learn a bunch of organized moves. If you're a rookie and just want to beat the crap out of someone in a game that looks great, Mace may be the right game for you. Mace The Dark Age is game number 101 for the Complete in Box N64 library. Next up an Army Men game, Army Men Sarge's Heroes 2. Sarge's Heroes 2 was developed and published by 3DO, releasing for the N64 in 2000. Sarge's Heroes 2 is one of three Army Men games on the N64. A lot was improved on since the first game. The game is a lot better graphically, you can see enemies from a further distance, and keep the same weapons you enjoyed in the first game. With Sarge's Heroes 2, you get all new levels with a fun storyline. I'm a huge fan of the Army Men series. One downfall in the game is that some of the levels take forever to complete. There is also no save points throughout the levels, so if you die, you have to go all the way back to the very beginning of the level. However, with strategies, the levels offer plenty of health, 
Collecting health at the appropriate time will make for a super fun gameplay experience. In Army Men Sarge's Heroes 2 is game number 102 for the collection. Next up, a game based off a Disney movie, A Bug's Life. A Bug's Life was developed by Traveler's Tales and published by Activision. It was made available to purchase for the N64 in 1999. A Bug's Life is a platforming game. You'll run around defeating enemies to save the Ant Kingdom from the Grasshoppers. The controls in the game are subpar. You often find yourself stuck in many parts of the level as you try to progress. The story follows the movie, but it uses still pictures and text making it feel monotone. The Grasshoppers will destroy everything in your kingdom. This game is obviously geared towards a younger audience. You will most likely not find any joy in playing this game. A Bug's Life is game number 103 for the N64 library. Here we have another fighting game, Biofreaks. Biofreaks was developed by Sapphire Corporation and published by Midway. The game was available to purchase for the N64 in 1998. Biofreaks is another fighting game for the N64. The name Biofreaks stands for Biological Flying Robotic Enhanced Armored Killing Synthoids. Say that five times fast. This game is a lot like Midway's other fighter, Mace, which we've already covered. The graphics are great, the characters look good, and the game adds some unique elements. However, it's another button masher. Some of the weapons in the game can be overpowered too. The game is unique and fun, but again, if you're into skilled fighting games, you won't enjoy it as much. The game isn't expensive, so it's definitely worth adding to your collection for the price. Biofreaks is game number 104 for the N64 library. Another shooter for the collection, Armorines Project Swarm. Armorines was developed and published by Acclaim, releasing for the N64 in 1999. Another first person shooter for the N64, Armorines has you taking on bugs from all different directions. You'll be running around finding keys and switches, all while defeating enemies to advance. It's basically a Turok game, but with bugs rather than dinosaurs. The environments are very open and sparse, but you're constantly wondering where to go next. One thing I do like in the game are the weapons. It's cool how you can change over to the power stick and use it to activate a switch or power something on. Overall, the game isn't terrible, but it's not the most fun you'll have with a first person shooter on the system either. In Armorines, Project Swarm is game number 105 for the N64 Complete in Box Library. Next up we have some boxes. Resident Evil 2, Box and Manual. The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. And finally WCW NWO World Tour, which is a duplicate. Next up is a duplicate game that I'll still be adding onto the shelf, and that game is Mario 64. And the reason why I'll still be adding this one to the shelf is the other one up there is a player's choice. So I'm going to keep this one because it's a variant. So I actually bought this huge lot a while ago, and there were so many games in the lot that I didn't want to sit there and record all the gameplay for it and make a super long video. So I kind of let other episodes happen in between, and I started letting the duplicates pile up. So the rest of the games in the collection are duplicates and there's some really nice ones too that I'll be selling off and putting the money back into the N64 collection. And those games are The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Monaco Grand Prix, Turok, Super Smash Brothers, Turok 2, GT64, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Army Men Sarge's Heroes, and Rugrat Scavenger Hunt. This huge lot of 27 games, boxes, and manuals cost me $450 shipped. And at $450 shipped, that brings our total up to $4,643. Let's get these games on the shelf. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe. I'll be completing the entire N64 library, complete in box, right here on the show. Also make sure to leave a thumbs up.
for a mega lot. Until next time, I'm Wayne, and thanks for watching.